Hey, beautiful, fabulous people. It's five o'clock. It's Monday. It's the 20th of May. It's time for Watch Me Work, where we sit and work simultaneously. And then we talk with you about your work, your creative process. I'm SLP. We've been doing this show for a long time, like 12, 13 years. It's been a while. We started out um, at a theater in the East Village, and then we moved to the lobby of the public theater and then when COVID came we moved online and here we are happily online thanks to the public theater and Howl Round. Uh, so what happens is we work together or simultaneously for 20 minutes and then you ask me questions about your work and your creative process and while we don't have time to for you to read from your work present your work whatever that work might be we do have plenty of time for you to ask me shop questions and talk shop and share stuff. So, hey. Okay. So, new work development. Tell us how to get in touch if we should want to get in touch. Thank you. So, yeah. So, oh, at no, it's, it's Haley. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, at the end of the 20 minute work session, please just use a raise your hand function to ask a question. And then we'll call on you based on the order of the hands raised and we'll ask you to mute yourself for your question. Killed it. It couldn't be easier than that. It could be easier than that. Yay. All right. Well, I'm going to set my timer and here we go.
All right, all right. Here we are. That was 20 minutes. Anybody with a question, happy to have a conversation with you. If you and do. just a reminder, please use the raise your hand function and we'll get a nice queue going of questions. Hi, Stan. You could unmute yourself. Hey, dear Hi. friend. Hi, dear friend. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Susan? It's great to see you, man. After all these years, Stan and yes. I were friends in London a long time ago. Forty years ago, is it? No. Forty years ago. Hundred and forty no, years ago, I think. Not really. Yeah. Well, uh, Susan. I would like to know how about you work with characters, developing characters. Uh, do you have a special set of actions for characters and you develop the character around them or they, do they evolve while you are writing? Huh. Oh, that's a great question, Stan. Let's think of characters and how we might develop characters. Um, yeah. What I start by developing characters, I always try to think of what does this particular person want yeah so for example if it's like a uh uh to say a guy going to drama school which that's where we met you know okay <laughs> yeah. and to say that was a character you know that's a character and you think well what does this person want or a woman going to drama school you know what does this person want and during the course of the whatever you're writing, it's a TV show, it's a novel, it's a play, it's a movie. Um, you think, well, what does she want and where is she starting right now? And and then does she get what she wants by the end of the story or not? Yeah. And that's the, the desire, I would say, is the most important thing when I'm developing a character. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it, it makes sense. But if you need a special uh, sort of Set of actions, a murder or something, or something in 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 your play, uh, and you want that character to to do it in a certain way. Do how do you do, do you think of that? So you d decide on actions for character and build the character from that. Some kind of backward design or something you, you can call it. Well, well, yeah, I I would I th I think that it's but it, it's still it's always about what they want, you know, because I mean. Yes, there are random acts of violence, you know, like a mur random murders. Um, no. But also the ones that are really exciting are are the sort of more um, exciting, I'm sorry, but in drama, in literature, the ones yeah. that are more interesting that hold our interest are the ones that are motivated by the character's need. Yeah. So like yeah. in Hamlet, you know, there's some murders in that play and they're motivated by what the characters want. Yeah. And so... If you can think of, you know, someone running around with a knife and they're going to and say they want to. Oh, maybe they want to. It's the, it's again, it's the woman who went to drama school and she wants to get that wonderful part. And her nemesis, the person she hates, got the part instead. She might be motivated to stab her. Yeah. You know, maybe. So that's, you know, yeah, yeah. Be motivated I know, I know. by what she wants, you know. Does that yeah. Make that makes sense. It makes sense. But then you build the character from the from what the person wants. That's that's what I do. Um, and yeah. that's what I do. And I, I, I made up something a couple of years ago and I love saying it. It's like, because it's about geometry. In geometry, there's a, 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 a truth that two points make a line. So if you have a point here and a point here, you can, that those the existence of those two points is going to create a line, an actual yeah. line, you know? So yeah. if we use that in, in dramatic writing or even writing novels or whatever, two points, where the character is and where the character wants to go will create lines of dialogue. Yeah, yeah. So whatever she's reaching for is going to help you understand what she's saying, what she's talking about, what she's doing. You know, someone who, again, wants that coveted role uh, at, at Covent Garden is is going to spend more time perhaps in the theater or studying theater things than someone who wants to be a medical doctor, for example. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, so that will help you uh, understand what she's doing during the course of the the, the okay. story you're writing. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, yeah. The reason why I asked because yeah, I write me. civility patient cases, oh. and there you have to sort of decide on the, the patient to do something on a, on a particular. Then you have to build the the, the character around that action oh, that wow. the, the, the 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 actor is going to perform in, in different stages. So, so tell me, so tell me, explain to me what it is. It's a civil education case. What, what do you mean? I don't understand what that is. We, we, we have, we have professional actors who perform ill in front of medical students. Yeah. So standardized patients or simulated patients, we, we call them. And then you have to decide on special actions because the, the, the students want to learn different, different things. And you have to build a, a character around those actions so it's a little bit of a backward design business oh that's so cool so like if they is. come in with a with a uh like they can't see out of one eye or something that's their condition you have to sort of uh what we call in the states a uh, reverse engineer like figure yeah. out how they got the way they got yeah right right and so we have cool. one case a woman who who her, who her husband died, and um, and it comes out that he has children with another woman. So we have a, a, that should be sort of revealed, and have, we have to build a character around that. So reverse character building in a way. Right, 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 right. Well, I wonder. I wonder. I mean, if if desire works there, <laughs> if it works, if you can, if you can reverse engineer it back like that. I'm not sure. I've never thought of that. I've never tried to do that. Yeah. I wow. What do you normally do? What do you normally do? How do you normally do it? Well, we sort of together with, with other professionals, we decide on special actions. And then uh -huh. I try to build up the character around those actions. It should be sort of crying or running out of the room or whatever because of something. And then I try to fill the person, help the actor with the, the, the character who leads up to that action. Which, right, right, right. But but I think desire works well. It helped yeah. me. You you, you describe it in the way yeah. you work. Yeah, yeah. It's it's for me. Uh, and these are all my people, all fictional people, you know. And it's not you know medical stuff. So it's it's not no, like no. life and death, you know. It's just it's just like entertainment or art. But for yeah. me, the desire is the fire that's burning in your heart, you know, that that makes you get up in the morning, go out the door, and and eat a certain food or want to see a certain friend or things like that. Yeah. Um, and that, um, and it, as long as that desire continues to burn, you perform habits, and your habits are your character. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what you're doing every day is your character. So that's yeah. how I would I work it in in fictional settings. Um, yeah, I tried to build up that sort of desire when I write the character, but it, uh -huh. it starts off with an action. Then, then I have to sort of write the, the character from that action uh -huh. and the that, desire and the want. That is so cool, man. Thank you. It's yeah. so great. What a joy to see you. I know. I know. It's 190 years ago we hung out. It is. It <laughs> is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it really is. But I love that you come to watch me work. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, darling. Thank you, Sen. Hi, Emmanuel. You can unmute yourself now. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a question. Um, I'm writing a, a murder mystery. Oh, okay. Um, and I've never done that before. It's kind of the same as the question just before that's yeah. why I think right. of it. like Stan right that's cool and so because it's not like a linear story the idea would be that the main character would uh bring the audience through flashbacks oh and discover uh they are the person who was murdered and they're like narrating so I'm not quite sure oh, cool. how, um I'm not quite sure how to build story around that um, because it's non-linear or maybe it is. And to this thing of, of wants, I'm not sure, like she wants to know, she wants to find out that, I guess, you know, in a murder mystery, like we wanna find out that's the guiding thing, but it doesn't, I'm finding it complicated to, to apply like the normal <laughs> dramatic mm -hmm. character to I'm not quite sure how to build this character or 
Um, oh, yeah, someone put the lovely bones in the yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, the lovely bones of novel. I haven't read it. It's 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 apparently very much loved. Um it was that was the narrator of the lovely bones, the woman who was killed. Yeah, everybody's not everybody's read this book but me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, that there's some there's so there's uh, that's a wonderful uh thing to read then. Or or I think there's also a film or something. I'm flashing on it. I didn't see that either. But um I, I um so this this uh that writer um i'm trying to pull her name alice siebel no is that her name i'm just totally guessing whoa okay okay i know her name i haven't read her work though um she might have more to say on this than i do having never written oops emmanuel you're you're muted sweetie no can't hear you oh okay and were you talking just now no, I just said yes. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, okay. Um, but I would, you know, I mean, maybe the it's 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 tricky because maybe the person who was has been killed doesn't want to know why she was killed. Maybe she wants something else. I mean, you know, you know what I mean, which might give it that non-linearity thing you're talking about because if you think about it, she's on a trajectory of her own. That's like, I mean, I'm guessing, I don't know. I know nothing about your story, but she's going over here and then something happens to her that kills her, you know? So she, what does she want? Um, I'm still curious about, I mean, I'd like to feel that she's more than just uh, a, a dead person. Definitely, definitely more. Well, uh-huh. the it would be to be fl- I guess flashbacks through her life to try and piece it through uh-huh. she no she doesn't even know how she was killed wow okay There's, cool um, it will reveal itself through the show and through like the, the vignettes or through the scenes I guess uh-huh. uh-huh okay okay cool cool that's that's cool and and I think people are throwing things in the chat here there's there might be other you know a lot of works uh, or movies or, or things that that could help you uh, in that, but um, I would say as much as po- it, it's weird. It's kind of a it's a huge generalization, which may or may not be helpful all the time. But whenever I'm confused about what's going on in my story, I ask myself, "What do my characters want?" And somehow that seems to realign me with this the plot of the story. Okay, you know, in your case, haha, plot because she's dead. So it's a win-win, you know what I mean? But just what does she want? What does she want? Everyone in the story, what do they want? What are they doing? What are they after? Because then it's it, the story becomes very rich mm-hmm. instead of just a bunch of, you know, this happened, this happened, this happened in the end, but up, up, yes. you know? So, um, but but I, it, sound, it, it looks like there's a lot, there are a lot of uh, uh, ideas for, for, for things you could look at that sort of are right in a kind of story um yes yeah of course yeah maybe she's tr- trying to solve the murder kimmy says yeah but that that sounds like what you're saying emmanuel that maybe she's trying to figure out what well, happened she, yeah exactly no yeah. she knows she, she just doesn't really understand anyway it's uh, yeah telling the story but the the whole it, just the question of how to build a story where there isn't like a, a necessarily linear story just to build dramatic tension or just to build like you know she is a full character because there will be slices of life and things like that they you know, that will inform i guess mm-hmm. people know uh-huh. um, but yes i guess like yeah. de- desire because she's dead <laughs> like her desire to find out is doesn't feel compelling to me that's yeah I, because I, I that's why i think it's a it's it's her desire to find out but it's also a desire of something else i think she wants something that's not about being killed i think she's she wants something i mean maybe she wanted to be you know uh, she wanted to pass the bar exam and she was trying to she was really studying really hard and she'd failed before and she was worried or her parents thought being a lawyer was like not a good thing because you know they didn't think that was i mean maybe that there's a lot of other stuff that has nothing to do with the fact that somebody killed her yeah you, you see what i mean she's on her own path right um and yet pursuing what she wants might dovetail into finding out why she 
was killed maybe mm -hmm. i don't know but again these other books the lovely bones probably has a lot more to say about that than that might be helpful no that's, that's very helpful thank you are you back in new are you back in france or are you in new york no uh, i'm i moved here now <laughs> you did welcome oh my god no one's moving here yeah everyone's leaving lord have mercy well 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 welcome hopefully you'll stay through the end of the year uh you know fingers crossed fingers crossed uh we're, we we're glad to have you thank you very much i'm, I'm very welcome thank you welcome thank you Emmanuel. hi shane you can unmute yourself now right okay. hi hi um, first of all thank you so so much for doing this it's oh, so yes. cool and i just i feel so happy to be here thank you um so my question I'm working on my first full length play mm -hmm. um, and I'm curious, you know, what your thoughts are on sort of devoting your time to the actual writing of the dialogue, like the actual play itself versus mm -hmm. time taken to do research and then also time taken to sort of do like dreamy note taking that, that, that gets you deeper into character and plot. like. I sort of, this idea came to me and, and the first few scenes with sort of at least what I wanted to happen. And I have written that dialogue and mm -hmm. I think, and then I also, I do have a sense of, of where I want it to end and how okay. I want the audience to feel. And then it's that very important part that connects you from beginning to end. And there, there, there is some research that, that I think is important for just the world building and, you know, without going into too much detail. Mm -hmm. And it has informed a lot of, I guess what I just said, the idea of like deepening the character, whether it's her backstory and what she wants and where she's going. Um, and also just thinking about how to make the plot really rich. So yeah, I'm just wondering how how you feel about research versus playwriting versus dreaming i love i love your <laughs> gestures they're so lovely well first let's 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 put it all under the umbrella or tent or whatever you know of like playwriting or writing yes. let's not make like dreaming have to stand out in the cold or research have to be in the you know in the shed you know what i'm saying it like plot and character plot gets to be in the house and characters in the shed or sh characters in the house and plots in the shed let them all be under the beautiful roof of called whatever the fuck you're writing yeah. i okay no i mean i don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings but you know no. that's what it is whatever the fuck you're writing it's yeah. all there it's all important it's all wonderful it's all going to help you it's all good to do and spend time on You've already started writing. My feeling would be, if you know the end, wow, go. You've already started. Don't yeah. stop. It's like, I don't know, not to get too graphic, but come on, baby, don't stop now. Come on. Don't <laughs> stop. Don't be like, well, I don't know. I have to make a phone call. No, don't stop. Right. Okay? Just keep <clears throat> going. Keep going. Keep going because you're, 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 it's like you have some fear, you have some anxiety. Oh no, why don't I take a detour and do some research? <laughs> you know what I mean? You've already started. Yeah. I would say keep going and write what will win the prize of the shittiest first draft ever written by any human sentient living being ever, ever, ever. <laughs> and write that draft. And get to the finish line. Throw yourself across the finish line. Oh my God, this is so bad. And it's only like, you know, X number of pages. It needs to be like five times as long, but you didn't have time to do the research. And then you have something. Yeah. And then you can fiddle. And then you can say, okay. And you can reread it and say, okay, now I'm going to go and do some research for two days or a week. You see what I mean? So I would say, Shane, just go for it. And like, and all the voices are going to be like, you, you should do my dream time. You should do my character. You've already started. Just do yeah. it. Yeah. 
All right. I love that. No, I needed to hear that. And that's very much like a first draft is like a huge goal of mine for right now. So to just get that extra little push is Go just on. what I need to I hear. Know. If you were, if I, I knew you, where do you live in New York? Where I do. You? Yeah. Where in New York? Where? I'm, I, Upper West Side. Upper West Side. Oh, where, which yeah, way just, are you facing right now? Are you facing uh, east? I'm facing south. Are we looking at each other? You're facing south. Yes, we're looking at each other. So I'm going to reach out to you and say, come on. I'll take Go it. On. Okay, so we just pulled you across the finish line. Come on. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. It always works. Just, just, just go ahead and write. It has to be the like the shittiest first draft ever. Yeah. And then you go back and you can do all the research and all that. And we'll talk about it. How when are you going to be done? I mean, I set a goal for myself that that I don't know. Maybe it's a generous goal. I want a I want a a shitty finished draft. I was earlier saying a solid first draft. But a shitty first draft, I'll take that too. I'd like to, I want it by the end of this year. Fantastic. Want it by the end of this Shitty and solid begin with the same letter. So there we go. You win. By the end of this year. Okay. Yeah. The end of this year. The end of this year. I know. I got time, right? Y yeah. Yeah. I, got yeah. Time. It, it In was, fact, at the very I least, I wanted a solid first draft, if not like a very more than solid. But we yeah. can start with shitty. Go. Well, you can get a shitty first draft done faster than that. How yeah. long, how many pages is it going to be? I mean, I probably got at least like 20 to 30 of, you know, of this first of the draft started already that I have right. gone back and tinkered and redrafted. And, but I'm kind of at the point where I'm like, look, you at least know what these first three scenes are. Like, let's keep moving forward. Like, yeah, how I, long is it going to be when you're done? How long is it going to be? I don't, I don't know. How long? Mm. I, is that like, I don't know, Saturn? I, I don't know. I, I, yeah, sure. Six. Yeah. Because we're just playing around. Let's say yeah, like this is whatever the fuck well, you're writing. Yeah, we're not serious. Yeah, I mean, I just want it to be, you know, like the one thing that I have, the one dramatic thing I have written before this. I've written plenty of other things, but the I wrote a short play that was like twenty pages. Right. This is a, but this is bigger. So I'm just in my mind, I'm thinking of it as a full-length place so whether that's I mean if I've already written 20 or 30 I think there's still a I don't know 90 pages yeah or like you know 60 or 60 yeah I mean, because you're not you're not gonna spend time doing research right now right so like it could be like like 70 pages long total right I mean there are plays on Broadway that are 90 minutes that's like 90 pages right. 100 pages so that's that's six so like you know right like I don't know 50 more pages and you're done. All right. You can get that done faster than before the end of the year. Yeah, you that's- Go back and rewrite it. Yeah. Okay. That's for sure. All right, cool. I'm on it. I'm I'm going with you. Go. Come on. <laughs> exactly. What? You're in my room. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. That was fun. <laughs> See, sometimes thank you just have to have fun. Who's next? But I'll just talk while whoever's next is loaded. Sometimes you just have to have fun. Sometimes you just have to make a game of it. Remember that- you know, if you're in the theater, it's called play writing. Play. Who's next? Who's next, Haley? Got Lindsay up next. Hey, Lindsay. Hi, Susan. Um, I'm Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. I'm calling from Alabama, from Tuskegee, oh. Alabama. Oh, right on. Yeah, and I'm um I'm pretty sure you answered my my question. I'm pretty sure the answer was right. The shittiest first draft ever, but I'm still gonna ask the question in case there's something I missed. Girl, um, um kind of like it's like three parts, but it's like one. Um, how do you get your work out? Like, do you sit at a regular time, like every like Monday at this time? Like, how do you like consistently get your work out? And then um, I heard you talk about how do you know ask what do your characters want but like how do you know what your characters want is that like another process of like kind of connecting to your characters to like really figure out like what they want if it feels like you don't know and the last part is just um like that inner critic but I guess that's like just just shut up and write it but yeah those are okay. yeah and Lindsay these are all these like three great questions you oh this is like the gold star people today asking these great questions but no really the and the, the we'll do the third question first um and, and that's one thing that you've got to do with the inner critic you got to just keep having fun okay. and if you're having fun then the inner critic says shit and you go i know <laughs> i'm writing anyway you know like that you just you just speed 
is the inner critic. The inner critic is very, very intelligent. Yeah. And they're very slow because they think everything they're going to say. You know, they think, you know what I mean? So they mm. slow. If you move fast, the inner critic can't catch you. Mm. It's like running away from Massa back in the old days. I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend anybody, but some mm. of us had that in our, our heritage. You know, you had to run. Mm. Run. Okay. That's what we're t- with, with, with Shane. You're writing fast. That's why I say speed it up. Write fast. You can always go back and rewrite. Okay. I'm not saying shoddy work. I'm saying write it quickly and you can go back and fix it later. So speed helps with the inner critic because they're slow. Okay. And they want you to slow down too. So they can tell you what they think. You don't want to hear what they think right now. Mm-hmm. Not right now. Later. When you're rewriting. Okay. That's yeah. the other thing. Um, the second thing is, now I now remember the first question, but I don't remember the second one. Oh, talking to your characters, getting to know, listening. It's just like if you're, have you ever been, Lindsay, in like in love with somebody? Yeah. Okay, right. So you're like, hey, baby, what do you need? And they go, oh, baby, I need this and that. And you go, oh, baby, I can get you that, like that. But I mean, I had these conversations, right, with my beloved people. Mm-hmm. You listen to them. You, you actually listen. It's like talking to a beloved friend or lover or, or a child or whatever. You listen to them. What do you need? How was your day? What are you up to? What do you want? What do you want in this story? Do you want to, you know, so you, you listen to them and they talk to you. And the more you listen, the more they talk. And the better you listen, the deeper they talk, you know? Yeah. Okay. So just start talking to them. And if you're lost in the middle of a scene and you're writing and you're like, well, I don't know what the i'm doing you go character what do you want and they go I don't know, whatever go to Moscow. and you're like oh my god and so you you know try to make that happen okay or, i mean not moscow not like this moscow like three sisters and i'm making a joke um and the first thing is do i have a certain time to get the work out yeah. i do i love schedules i have so many little schedules because I have a lot of stuff going on, you know, but even if you just have a regular nine to five and all that, I think a schedule helps the muse know when and where to land. Mm -hmm. So I like getting up early in the morning because I'm a natural getting up early in the morning type of person. I would not suggest that for somebody who doesn't like that. Some night owls, night owls, do your night owl thing. Afternoon people do your afternoon people thing. I'm a morning person. I like getting up very early. I have a son who is lovely and also in, enjoys my attention in the morning. I ask him to, you know, be in another place. And I try to get up early enough to get my work done kind of before he gets up. So pick a time, same time every day, even if it's just 20 minutes. Okay. Even if it's even if all you got is 20 minutes, 20 minutes before you go to work or 20 minutes when you come home from work or you know, and if you find yourself like binge watching your favorite TV show, go, I might be wasting my time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe if I want to get my writing done, I binge watch on the weekends as a treat for getting my writing done. Okay. You know, it's like that. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. so much. Great questions. Thank you. Thank you, Lindsay. I send away. You can unmute yourself. Hi, it's Stephanie. This is my work computer. So sorry. Oh. <laughs> hey, Steph, wait, I know. Do I know you from somewhere? You look familiar. From your class, yeah. Oh, I'm like, hi. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How's hey. it going? It's going well. Hi there. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. Um, I'm so glad I happened upon this. I always miss it. So, um, uh, I had a question about um collaboration last year I finished my first pilot yay <laughs> yay yay woohoo thank you um since then I've been writing with I don't know I guess people just know they're all like hey do you write and I was like nobody I don't know how you found that out but okay <laughs> and so they asked to collaborate with me um but I end up writing it I think one person I collaborated with he wrote something and then from that I wrote something entirely different and slightly um better (laughs) and Mm -hmm. then um another person asked me to write and I 
seem to be carrying a bit of the weight of the writing process mm -hmm. rather than uh, it being like an even keel. So my question then to you would be, how do you maneuver through credits uh, mm -hmm. and sharing that mm -hmm. and sharing that, you know, uh, sharing that responsibility when I feel like I'm doing more of the heavy lifting but right. I also want to acknowledge that they were helping or that they did something. Um, yeah. Right. Mm. Ooh, this is a thorny, thorny thing. Um, because it's a, I mean, you know, you can say inspired by or, or additional writing by like that. You can credit them. Um, if it's a pilot and if it's a, a, a movie or something like that, it's kind of a union, a WGA issue that the WGA would, the, would, would arbitrate and decide, okay? But if it's a play for the moment, I think what you can say is, you know, additional writing by or based on an idea formulated by, you know, you can give them some kind of credit. Um, you know what I mean? Just in the, based on an idea by, story by, you know, Stephanie and Stephanie's friend. You know what I mean? Like that, or story, you know, story by Stephanie, Stephanie's friend and Stephanie's other friend, you know? Um, so I would definitely, I think it's wonderful to credit them in some way, um, but not over credit them. And my black sister witch vibe says, Stephanie, right? by yourself stephanie you wrote a pilot all by yourself people hear you right yes of course of course you're right but 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 for them to collaborate with you collaborate a lot of times people who you know do you write too you know they they need to be care right by yourself right but if you want to say yeah okay we'll hash out the story together and then i'm going to write the script or whatever be very clear jump next time what the duties are, because if they've done, let's say, no writing, I mean, you know, if, if they're really super new and you've already got a pilot or two under your belt, you got to just be real. Be like, I'll collaborate with you, but let's be clear about who's really going to be, you know, they can story by us and then scripts and then script by me and then script by Stephanie, for example. Be clear at the jump. You don't need to be winning friends by helping them write their stuff. Okay, you can no, 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 no. You, 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 you're beyond that. And a lot of times we are moved because we're kind and loving people to, you know, let me help somebody up. And then what happens? It, it gets all entangled because sometimes in work relationships, there's not a balance. A lot of times, just to make a really broad generalization, with women, people, folk, mm -hmm. you know, or those who identify as such. We tend to be more helpful. Oh, let me help you, you know? And I just want you to stand, you know, stand tall in your in your writer power and know that you're a writer all on your own. You can give credit to people. Definitely do if they contributed something significant. Definitely, that's the right thing to do. But going forward, be real mindful and be real clear from jump, okay? Yeah, thank you. Great question. Great to see you too. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi, Kathleen. You can unmute yourself now. Okay. Hi. Thank you so much. Hi there. I'm glad I found out about this. I'm glad um, you found out about this too. Yeah. Part of what you said earlier made me think about one approach to this this issue I'm having now. I'm I'm a writer. I'm writing a musical. It's a okay. short musical. And it's mostly got comic elements, but now I've gotten to a point where there's a betrayal of one character by another. Mm. And it was supposed to be the next to the last scene. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, when I'm writing the lyrics to this song, I'm finding that the sense of betrayal is deeper than I thought. Mm -hmm. So now I'm trying to dig my way out of this and make it all nice and fluffy at the end. And it's not working. And oh. I'm just trying to figure out how to approach it. And so when you were talking about speaking to the characters. Right. 
I'm definitely going to talk to the two characters and you find better, out what, right? what do you really want? I thought right. there was something else going on. Right, 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 right. So you're 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 surprised by what is happening with the characters and you're you're not yeah. I think the characters will know and I think mm, sometimes we have to kind of have to go with what the characters want instead of what we want for them. Yeah. I like that to think drag? I'm in charge, but yeah. You, you like to think you're in charge. Well, you are. You you are in charge. You're just not in charge of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on, girl. You, know, <laughs> you don't make them do something. Care, no, don't. You know, you're not. No, you're not the boss of them. I, I can. No, see you're it. not. You're not. You're not. You're not the boss of them. I know, and that that's a weird thing about writing. At least in my experience, I know other writers have different experience, but in my experience, you're not the, the muse. You're not the boss of the muse. The muse is like, what? Who? Who? Who are you talking to? And you're like, yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes. You gotta be like, yes, ma'am. Oh shoot, it's about that. I mean, then that's where the surprise and delight comes in the in the artist's in, in the artist's life. Because the muse is so much greater than we are. And we are her, their, his, however they identify themselves, the humble servants of the spirit. Hooray. Yeah. Talk to your characters. I think that's an excellent idea. Catherine. I will go back and talk to them. Thank you. You're welcome. It's, 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 it's almost six o'clock. I have a, a little um, suggestion for your digestion. Because we're not going to be here on, uh, whatchamacallit, who's he, what's it day, Memorial Day, are we? We're not. No. That's what I thought. Okay, thank you. Okay. So I was talking to a friend the other day who was like, they have, you know, they're a writer and he has some goals and he was getting all tangled up and he was saying, well, maybe I shouldn't have any goals because goals are bad and they trip me up, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I started thinking about, you know, goals are great, you know, the desire, but the desire for what you want, like I want to write a novel and get it published, for example, right? Your goal for your writing should not cloud over the love you have for the work. And that's what's tricky, because I, I, I have a lot of goals, you know, I, but at the end of the day, or always in the process, when I'm writing, I love writing much more than I love any kind of goal that I might have, you know, and um, just keep keep hold of the love. And again, desire of the characters is a, a great way to do that. You know, so that's it's six o'clock. It's six o'clock and we will be back. When will we be back? New work development for Zoe. Tell I'm, ex us. I'm, I'm excited for us to talk about it. Uh, okay. Oh, that means I've been bad. And I haven't returned the emails that they've been sending me. Okay, I'm excited well, for us to talk about it and let everybody know. We will, we will be back as soon as the week after Memorial Day happens. Um, probably June the 3rd. That's my guess. If new work development is in the house. I get confused about the holidays because I work every day. I don't take a holiday. So I don't have days where I don't have to come into the office. Uh, but we will figure it out. We'll be back. We'll have the dates posted ASAP. And then we'll see you here because it's so much fun. Yay. Love you guys. Love you all. Thank you so much for all your great questions. Woohoo! Yay, Sten! All the way from Sweden. Bye-bye. <laughs>